Hello and welcome to Wiring Part 1 on Project Electrolyte, the 1972 Plymouth Satellite Tesla Swap. In this episode, I'll be going over some of the wiring for most of the EV components, the uh, high voltage DC, along with uh, an introduction to some of the other car wiring. Before I got started, I needed to finish stripping out the rest of the old interior saying goodbye to this uh, original color in order to prep the surfaces uh, below. This is all stripped down, sanded, degreased, washed, dried, getting it ready for lizard skin, just as a sound deadener. With as quiet as the car is going to be, I'm sure I'm going to hear every rattle and vibration, so I'm doing my best to mitigate that. Uh, the lizard skin was pretty easy to put on once the surfaces are prepped just masking off everything you don't want sprayed and then you shoot it with the uh, the lizard skin um, sprayer it kind of comes out like a thick paint or a texture but it dries really nice made a nice surface it definitely took some of the vibration out of the the panels and now with that done i can start mounting some of the final components that i need here's the uh, gas pedal, I guess you'd call it. I was able to use uh, existing holes in the firewall, so no drilling. I just added a couple of rib nuts. Along this whole process, I've tried to not drill as much as possible. Here's another example of that. This is the controller for the electric power steering rack, and it fit right in the bolts where the bulkhead wiring used to pass through the firewall. You can kind of see it's back there against the firewall. I needed to patch that hole anyway, so this worked out perfect. Uh, I was limited on wire length with that, so it had to be uh, pretty close to the rack. Here's another example. These were um, body holes where I'm passing the, um, the wires that will go to the inverter on the uh, Tesla drive unit. They come out here. I've got them just zip tied into place. These are uh, double shielded wires. I will have it uh, protected with uh, some aluminum when I'm all done. And a little more design work. I needed a box. Um, I don't have a break, so I just uh, make cut relief cuts so I can fold this up. This is an aluminum box that's going to um, mount the J1772 charge socket. I needed to bring it out just a little bit. I didn't want to drill into the back of the trunk, so this is going to mount... Um, to the back just behind the bumper. You can see it uh, folded and I welded it back up and then mounted the charge socket to it. And it fits right behind the license plate. This is the original fuel filler for the car. A lot of cars in this era had a, a spring-loaded uh, license plate, so you just kind of flip it up and the charge socket fits right behind it. Kind of centered it there. It's got plenty of room for the big uh, locking J1772 uh, charge plugs. Now that that was mounted, I had to wire up the socket. This was pretty challenging, uh, the way this assembles and uh, heavy gauge wire. I went with a six gauge wire because that's all I could find. Um, I probably could have gotten away with eight, but I got it all wired up. It's uh, heat shrinked and shielded and should be protected and, and last without any trouble. You can look close and see the little pins inside there. You've got the the line one, the neutral, the ground. Uh, this will be either 110 or 220. And now I've got some other components. This is the battery management system, the, uh, the one with the big heat sink. And then I've got a uh, thermistor expansion module and a Wi-Fi module. I bought all these from Stealth EV, and that's just the way to go. Those guys know their stuff, and if you need any help, they're one phone call away. And uh, it it's just the way to go to have that extra, extra support when you need it. So I mounted all these to a piece of aluminum, started to route the wiring. A lot of these share uh, common wiring, you know, the, the power, the charge power, the ground. Um, they also have a CAN bus, so this is some of the CAN bus terminations. Um, it's kind of a uh, one wire in, two wire out. They all uh, have branches coming off of the main CAN bus line, but they need to be 
twisted pair. You don't want to go uh, very long without having them twisted, and then they need to be shielded. I got this tip from Matt at Stealth EV with the foil over it, and then I heat shrinked over over the whole foil. Some of the components on the uh, CAN bus are the BMS. I added an OBD2 port so I can run the torque app when I'm all done. Uh, the Tesla drive unit is on the CAN bus. The uh, thermal expansion module, the Wi-Fi module. And uh, this is where they're going to mount. This is on the um, kind of below the package tray. Um, so if you're in the trunk, you're looking up at it. And that charger is there on the left. These are some of the... Uh, high voltage DC contactors. This is for accessories like the uh, heater core, the battery heater, air conditioner, and they all go into a fuse block. You know, instead of uh, having a bunch of different wires to each individual um, fuse, I thought I'd make a bus bar out of aluminum. So this was CNC cut. Um, I figured out the spacing when these are all mounted. It's a, These are fuse holders that mount to a DIN rail. And once I had them all tight together there, I figured out this uh, bus bar. That way um, I'll be able to just have one lug with one power wire feed, and then that'll branch out to all the accessories through their individual fuses. Here's what it looks like mounted. Um, so three of those fuses, like I mentioned, the heater core, the battery heater, the air conditioner, and then we also have uh, the charge wire coming back into it, and then the DC-DC uh, converter, which will, um, go through the charger to, to charge the 12-volt uh, battery. Everything's starting to get wired a little at a time. I also need a uh, fuse block and a relay block, so this is on the same panel. This is a big sheet of aluminum I mounted behind the back seat. Um, it's been really great because I needed a lot of room to mount all these components. There's a, a big bus bar. That's for the uh, negative all the returns for all of the components. And this is the back side of that aluminum. It's been lizard skinned like the rest of the interior. I've got my two um, power window modules. Those are actually for the parking brake. And you can see the back of that fuse block I need to wire. And then I pass through um, all the different wire harnesses that I'm tying together. This is the uh, high voltage contactor box and shutoff box for uh, the motor and the battery pack. Um, I went with orange. Got this box at Harbor Freight. It's pretty nice. Uh, price was right and it's uh, the bright orange that indicates the uh, EV high voltage. Still laying out how I want this to go. I'm not sure yet. I'm trying to keep track of all this wiring. I just uh, I take notes. I put it on a spreadsheet. I cross out what I change, make more notes, um, keep it on a clipboard, and I've got my laptop there so I can constantly make adjustments and keep track because it's amazing how quick you forget. All of this is just one wire at a time, but it's uh, pretty tedious. I took a little break from wiring to uh, uh, redo my lights. These are the tail lights and the front lights. Um, they were pretty rough, so I, I found a, a sparkly textured silver paint that has a real nice reflection to it. Here's kind of a before and after of the taillights uh, with the wires loose and then making a harness. Powering up some of the lighting. These are switchback uh, turn signals. So I, I put uh, clear lenses in this 72, even though it came with uh, amber. These are 71 lenses, but that way I can have the uh, switch back, you can see the amber light is the uh, turn signal and the white is the running light. And then in the headlights, they've got this uh, running light bar. I'm not sure how I'm going to use all these lights. There's a lot of them, but uh, I like all the options. It's a lot of fun. And then here's the, uh, the inner fog lights uh, working. I like this bright yellow. I think it's going to make a neat look uh, while driving. That's it for this episode. Thanks for all the subscribers and keep it along. It's uh, very motivating to have other people sharing the excitement that I have with the project. And I'll be back soon with Wiring Part 2. Take care.